and three, two, one. Where we go, big fella. So, Chris, pleasure to have you on, mate. Thank you so much for having me on board, man. Oh, man. So, how did it all begin with us? Because we started working in the same bloody warehouse. Picking boxes. Picking, like moving one box from a pallet to another pallet that happened to be moving along. Yeah, good times. And then we somehow we started talking about movies. Yep. Um, and then we just started getting really into it because at that point I was thinking about starting my own like blog review site or some bullshit like that. And you gave stand-up comedy a go for a little while, I didn't did, you? Didn't I? People so, uh, told you you were quite misogynistic. Oh yeah, because my, I had a four minute. <laughs> <my, laughs> anyone who saw that was just, like horrified. Because, yeah. But my friends were the ones that mainly came. Like they filled out half the place. Like because like we came here to see Get Jono. Get a crowd. We came here to see Jono, and we got what we fucking like. What was it? Four minutes about anal sex. <laughs> it was just one of. The, oh. That's all right. Then, Jim Jeffries can keep you on the cliffhanger with talking about poop. Oh, poop for 20 minutes, apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good old bear. <laughs> you think he's going to be going political, but it's like, oh, no, we've got poop going on here. It's like, oh, but fucking... Speaking of politics, yeah. how, what, this is one thing I've been dying to talk to you about, especially on camera, Black yes. Panther. For me, the only thing controversial about that movie was it absolutely wasn't controversial. I don't understand what the hype is about because I was like, that's an average movie. But it's a standard Marvel movie. It like, is a standard Marvel movie. I, uh, from to be honest, I've not seen it. However, oh, really? like no, I've not seen it. Wow. Um, I tried to watch it before I watched uh, Infinity War. I uh, just couldn't get the opportunity. Uh, however, knowing what everyone's been talking about and just being, oh, it's like it's a black film. It's, yeah. and it's like, yeah. it's no, it's it's a film. Yeah, it's a Marvel it's film. It's just it's a Marvel film. And from what I hear, was absolutely fucking amazing. And I am like, looking forward to seeing it. Yes. And people are just going in, in that turn of, oh, it's about time that there's a, a strong black uh, superhero and things like that. Like, and so, cool, man. Like, that's awesome. <coughs> and, like, Blade. Like, well, Blade Sorry, what? too yeah. like, is evidently forgotten. Like, with, yeah. Speaking Blade of which, one. Like, oh, Blade that's... 3 they tried to bury and pretend never happened, but it uh, did. For good reason. But I, think I like how like, Deadpool rectified that. Shit on that one, but he was asked recently, like, who would you pick to play? Um, you know, if Blade was remade, who would you pick to play? And he just went, me, motherfucker. That was it. Yeah, no, I've read some stuff about Wesley Snipes on that set. and yeah. um, oh, like He would actually, he would only be referred to as Blade because he's a method actor, but the director had to talk to him through post-it notes, essentially. I heard that. <laughs> yeah, and he just invented his own lines. But it's like, oh, it's, it's like, I'm Blade. I don't give two shits. I mean, there's there's Diva. Yes. And then there's Wesley Snipes. <laughs> <laughs> there's got to be some other stories. Sorry, but if you ever see this, like, much... Mutual professional respect. Dude, you I work played, with you. You pulled off Blade. Heard some That's stories. No yeah. Thing, no. Buddy. No. That absolutely. was like the awesome first, films. As far as I'm concerned, that was the first one comic book movie that I saw that really nailed it. Yeah, absolutely. Like, really hit the nail on the head. And um, like Spider Man came after that. Like what? It, no matter what anyone says about Tobey Maguire's like stupid emotional faces, like the then. But he was a he was a fantastic Spider Man. They were just a great series of yes. films, full stop. Yes, and like Spider Man One though was the first one that actually looked like a comic book movie. It did. It really did. Like it had like the the framing and everything. It the, looked the like a visual a comic, comic book, book. Yes, because it was. it was bright, it was vibrant, uh, definitely catered more to the younger audience. But at the same time, enough substance within the story and characters to engage mm -hmm. the older, more intellectual audience as well and I remember doing a bit of a marathon of uh, Spider-Man 1, 2 and 3 with Katana uh, my daughter for those who don't know and um, <coughs> I hadn't watched those films in quite a long time and uh, a good friend and actor a friend of mine Justin Gerardin yeah. uh, said that by his oh very much <laughs> um, and by what he was saying like Spider-Man 2 is the best superhero film ever yes and yes, like yes. You, you say the same thing I 100% agree with that because it's just such a vast arc Baseline. and a journey within the story yep. and the characters and everything and uh, some, something with serious stakes and consequence yeah. and like a real villain mm. a real villain and like I, I saw this thing by a guy called movie bob recently where like he said is it really like is it really that good and it's like yes it is that good because everything that w and you can see it and once you know what to look for everything that worked in the first one they carried over to the second one like the the big doc ox big monologue about mm. his inhibitor chips like the inhibitor chip whoosh, gone yeah, and then he's just talking. He's like, "There's something in my head." And it's like it works so well mm. with Willem Dafoe as the Green Goblin talking to himself in the mirror. It's yeah. like, let's oh, do it again. Willem Dafoe, man. Let's do it Amazing. again. Oh, like that was an actor working his mm. ass off. In that. He always he's does, man. Like, oh, 
<laughs> just I'd love like, to work with him. Speaking of, oh, man, like other films he's been in, John Wick. Like, I want to talk about this stuff with you oh, online. Oh, yes. Like, this oh. is, <laughs> what did John Wick do? Pitched a tent in my pants. Yes. <laughs> what did, what did fucking... Oh, that, that yeah. just, it, it was a rebirth of the 80s action <laughs> genre. Yes. Like, the, the storyline is simple. Yep. The script and the writing cool. is only what's necessary. Simple. Die it's hard simple. So, exactly. Yeah. Die hard. I was uh, watching something about that just recently. But um, it's also, in my opinion, uh, being a former uh, MMA fighter, the fight scenes are so much more realistic. Mm. They're a lot more dynamic. And it's just something new with the judo and the Brazilian jiu-jitsu put into it. Uh, as well as having that military CQB and the weapons and the tactical elements oh. to it in uh, regards to the firearms. I mean, that film is just amazing. And that's what happens when you get a bunch of stunties together just mm. going, the best, let's, let's shoot a film. Potentially, you know, I don't know the ins and outs, but it's like potentially the best stunty crew in Hollywood. AP8, uh, yeah. oh, sorry, 8711, arguably the yeah. best stunt team in the world. Yeah. Like some of the stuff that they've pulled off and the films that they've done and just them as a unit, how they work, cool. how they train and how they operate. I can professional like a class team in the whole way so regimented like mm. every day about because they have to like they're doing such hectic things they've got to keep their bodies in tip top position absolutely like, when they're not on set them? their job is they're at the gym and they're training yeah like in in australia our film industry unfortunately at this point isn't strong enough for us to have well there's very few that have that full-time film job mm. so uh, i spend as much time <coughs> as i can at uh, the stunt gym for myself and I'm still not working full time. Like I, I work in front of the camera as an actor and as a stunt professional, but I've still got a day job. I've still got bills to pay and everything yeah, like that. You and it'll family to look after. As absolutely, well. yeah. and it's only a matter of time. Uh, the the magic line in regards to stunts is about three years to be able to start working full time. Oh. Uh, however, with the the changes that Anastasia Palaszczuk has brought into uh, yeah. the state government as well, and thank you so much. Oh, well, um, we were talking about that with Dave Beamish before. Like, we perfect. Have, it's a really great perspective where it's like you can. I was saying like you feel the upswing. Mm. It started like you know we we were on the baseline in a plateau for Yonks and then. You know, just like the Australian music industry, when Parkway, the underground heavy music industry, when Parkway Drive hit, you know, hit it big, there seems to be a swing yeah. in how an upswing that it feels like there's going to be more opportunities for like stunt people like yourself, because like we've got the best in the world. What was it, Mad Max? Quebec doing Mad Max Fury Road. I mean, that that film put stunts on the map. Oh, that was absolutely. We ignited and the conversation to get them recognised in the Oscars. To, yeah, I mean that's still being fought, and yeah. I. I'm sure in time that'll get past, uh, but like just the, the the stunt industry is underappreciated. Yeah, uh, like the makeup industry, I think as well. Like it's under, every, not undervalued, every but underappreciated. I think is the word. Yeah, well, everyone on a film set is yeah. necessary, right down to the runners. Because if mm. one person fails at their job or is is not employed, then it just makes things so much more difficult. To, and hopefully, like they've got in there that they're working towards something, mm. like something that's bigger than themselves and like you know just by them feeling this little caveat it may not be much but it's something that you can be responsible for and that you can contribute and then at the end of the day you're going to be able to go to your friends like whatever it goes on youtube emails like, i was i worked on this yeah and that was just one of the best times of my life absolutely and as we were saying before in regards to uh the government and the tax incentives that are starting to come back into the state which is about damn time but that pendulum swing started to happen with the massive blockbusters that started coming over here. Like yep. within the last few years, we've had Kong, Skull Island, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. We've got Thor. We've Aquaman. got Aquaman. Um, Haxel Ridge was shot down in New South Wales, but Mel Gibson's bringing his next film up to he Southeast Queensland, back. I've heard. He came back. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you're doing great things for the industry. And after the Commonwealth Games, it's... Uh, going to uh, hopefully get a lot busier towards the end of the year and yeah. with all of these bigger productions i know for a lot of people in the industry here they're a little bit pissed off in regards to the government giving all of these grants to offshore productions and things like yeah. that but at the end of the day the work's still coming here yeah, that, that's, and that's the place where you can at least earn your stripes to get enough recognition to then be able to go to the government and get your own grants but it shows that if these companies are taking an interest in an australian market it proves that the only thing standing in their way is the money mm. it proves like the only thing that's standing in the way is um the, the the cost differentials between different locations like there's nothing different there's nothing lesser about the australian film industry and what they produce it's just 
uh, just the, the particular barrier, the financial barriers that are there for the company. So we know we've got the talent. We know we've got everything we need. Um, but it's, yeah, and it's, oh, yeah, next thing. Losing your point. Yeah, well, see, I was just, So what were you trying to say? Uh, basically, I was just... I, I have a hard time being convinced that we're in dire straits. I think we were in dire straits. We, I don't, yeah, with uh, ne- things like, are on the that's up right, at the moment. When those companies uh, take the investment and prove that it's, there's nothing wrong with the... It's just the financial barriers. And when those financial barriers come down, then other companies come in, like Netflix, Stan, mm. are l- actively looking. They're not taking on a massive amount, but they're looking. Yeah. They are genuinely looking for Australian content. And it's just... I, the the yeah. whole... The whole birth of the VOD platform has just given so much more potential to the industry, full stop. Because instead of like, let, let's do its manageable numbers, a thousand films across the globe trying to get picked up for networks. There's only a certain amount of network um, <coughs> to be able to show films. Yep. Then pay TV came along, that upped it a little bit, but at the same time, like it's not uh, so it's not been until... Time. Netflix Stan and uh, Amazon and SBS On Demand, these sort of on-demand platforms yep. has just given so much more opportunity for filmmakers because it's yeah. creating so much more of a library of work. Yep. And um, that's where you can get your recognition. Getting a catalog going on. So um, basically, I don't, it's, it's just that weird thing where it's like I, a lot of people are decrying like the falling age of like the film on the, on the, at the cinema sort of things. Like, just, we'll just go then. Like, just stop. We have a great, the greatest opportunity. Do you want to make films or do you just want to get the recognition? Seriously. Mm. Like, if you want to get your things done and push your budgets, because I know that when, as my budgets get higher, then the levels to my creativity will just explode. Mm. Whereas, like, there, you know, imagine getting to a point where it's like, you know, it's no holds barred. There are no restrictions on your creativity. You can literally think anything you want. And it's like, we have the golden opportunity right now just to actually build something. It's here, the opportunity. It's it's here and it's ready for people to take. And if it you is. just stop complaining, I see this so much. Like, if you just stop complaining about how the market's saturated, it's like, dude, I'm in a, I'm making a podcast right now with my mates. Like, and if that's and if something starts from that, it's ones and zeros. I'm, and I'm gonna put it that on is YouTube. The same time, it's, it starts somewhere. Everything is yeah. saturated. Like everything this. has been done. Yeah. Everything has been redone. You've just got to find a way to redo it again and find a niche. And it's like, if, if you just have, there are podcasts out there, and I like, this is quoting someone else, but there are podcasts out there that's about, called the Gilmore Boys. This is one of the top 50 foot podcasts in the world. So these guys are making their living off these podcasts, right? It's two guys talking about the Gilmore Girls. What the fucking fuck? And that's their living. There's another one where, um, it's a YouTube channel uh, called Two Best Friends Play. It's literally two stoners getting high and playing video games and they just record <laughs> it together. That's it. That's the living. It's like, can you, if you don't have, if you think that the market's saturated and you can't see that as a viable alternative, what do I have? I don't know. Start something. Start, just write something down. You never know. Because the story about how we met, is like when we first started, we started talking about movies and then... That's right. We never <clears> finished that story. We never finished. Oh, we got distracted. <laughs> Um, I know that all too but, well. Um, uh, you know, we, it's, we just started talking about movies, and then you were starting your own production company, just because you. I'm assuming because you want more work. Yeah. Yeah, and because could, it's like it wasn't. If, I'm, to I'm you, not going to wait for me to get work. Of course, I'm still actively looking at yes. auditioning and applying for jobs. But when, <coughs> like, in the off time, just do your own stuff. Yeah. Like down uh, at APA, we're shooting or starting to shoot a film just next Friday because we're just sick of waiting for everyone else to start yeah. up shows so we're like fuck it let's just do some shit and get people hit by cars and set people on fire and stuff that was what I said with Devil May Care it was like uh, as much as I love the experience of Until Soldiers like uh, insane amounts of knowledge that I picked up from it it was like my closest friends were saying like man man it's good but like uh, it's not you mm. and so I was like cool well I want to throw it all in for something that's me uh, so let's do that. But anyway, getting back to the story, like we, you started the production company and said, man, you've, we've been talking for a while. You got anything that I could, you know, make? And I was like, oh, I've got that idea for a scene that we were talking about. That's all it is. Mm. Just write that. Mm. And I wrote it on a fucking Word document. You remember that? I remember your first script. It was on man, a Word having, like, how long ago was that now? That it was, was like four years almost to so the day. So four, four years ago, I produced your first film and to have a look at to where you're at now. Yeah. Uh, having seen how you run the set and for me having to take you off the set and just go, 
these are the things you need to say and yeah, do. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's like <laughs> camera, yeah, say yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, actually, I pulled you aside. I was like, what's actually said before the take? Like, I don't actually know because I'm assuming it's not lights, camera, action. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, actually, but because the, the, the oh, pro probably back in the old days sort of thing. Yeah. But, um, yeah, and then having the experience of having worked on a few projects with you now and having seen The Devil May Care, so much growth in those yeah. years. And work, just in, also in regards to how you run the set and the professionalism that you had mm. uh, on, on The Devil May Care as well, especially with the help of Angel Christo. It was a fantastic production. Thanks, the uh, the cast, um, although I didn't get any scenes with Dave Beamish, the amount of films that him and I have been in together and just never actually been in the same scene. We have like <laughs> moment together in um, uh, another thing I can't talk about at the moment. Oh, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, like even, even still having seen his work on that and I, I'm just so excited to also then see everyone else's work uh, having been in a scene with Ron Kelly, yeah. David Normans and like young Cameron Caulfield, like that was... That was amazing. I had so much fun that night. Oh, it was, it was, thanks, I'm missing man. someone. Like, the Bee Gees dude. B oh, Colin. P yeah, Colin. That's, that's the one. Oh, like, <laughs> seriously, hands down, one of the most interesting guys you'll ever meet. Powerful like, scene, man. Like, it was just yeah. such a great experience. It was such a... Yeah, because I played to your fears about your daughter more mm. than anything. That was the life experience that it was very easy to... Like, when you asked easy me for, for me to tap into yeah, that Yeah, when, when you asked me to cast you, I was like, well, there's only one spot. you can. You got a shitty name. It's Dennis. <laughs> uh, it's not the greatest name in the world. <clears throat> Shut um, up. That's my middle name. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh. My second middle name. That's I've awesome. got two. Well, so it was obviously not enough, and so you needed to get boosted with a second one. It was like Chris <laughs> Dennis Bridgewater. Hmm. That's Andrew Dennis. So I just dropped the Dennis, oh. and so it's just Andrew's Chris. Andrew's one of the, no, characters, like, the lead character name for my next big one that I'm pushing. So, so when, when, when are you going to write in a Chris character then? Oh, no, you're, you're, you've already been written in one, and it's called Douche Canoe. <laughs> douche Canoe. Yeah, that's actually, the, and he's got his, he's there with his best friend, Douche Pirate. Because <laughs> it's like, they don't actually get referred to by name in the scene, but it's just like... So How the like, fuck <laughs> do they earn these names? I'm I've, curious. I've, I've, done a, um, I've done a music video <laughs> where the name was, uh, the name of the lead character was Bob McSplooge. Bob it's because, like, I can literally do whatever I want in these things. We're not referring to them by name. So it's like when but you know up, who it is. When they come up in the <laughs> when they come up in the credits for like um, someone someone's IMDb or something like yeah. that, like I play Bob McSplooge. <laughs> and so uh, like, you're yeah, hijacking and, and, their resume. <laughs> you'll have it in the, like when the, like even when this gets made, you'll have it in yours. It's like douche. <laughs> That's so awesome! I can't wait for that. <laughs> that's going to be amazing. That's like when I bought. Oh, I got love the it. Rent, I got the rent for um, like my rehearsal studio that I rent with my um, uh, my band. I, I just forward the money every week, and in the description for um, Stuart, I just put slut money. <laughs> it's like, why did you put it there? Like, because if on the day if anyone ever looks at it, like a bank teller or something, they're going to see it because it's a weekly payment. The chances are very high. <laughs> I've done that for like the last 18 months, just hoping that moment comes along. Because the great thing is you can set it and just let it go, and it still comes up to slut money every time. <laughs> oh God, I love it. That's amazing. I am so gonna sabotage anyone else that I need oh, to transfer look, money it's to. It's like changing your, um, your partner's Facebook like <laughs> relationship status, or even their birthday. Oh man, I oh. forget the time I did that to my ex. Like I did it to my ex one time and it backfired hugely because I figured I'd be a patient and wait a few days mm. like and just like so leave it, leave the gap and so I could just stew like I had this little mischievous grin on my face for two to three <laughs> days straight it's like I know something you don't know sort of things like fucking whatever then and then like the day came along and it just like and I was like ah oh, here's the big day like I felt like Cartman waking up after <laughs> trying to see a prank and everything's just falling apart because they're a fucking brother messages saying happy birthday on the wrong day and it's like oh he should know come on i'm gonna pay for this but it's not my fault I, if anything i should be thanked for exposing a weakness in the the relation no i'm definitely not getting out of this i know you're in trouble oh, i remember I'm... working at a place once where the uh the the rule was if you left your facebook open on the reception computer oh, yeah you were and we were called face raping or fraped you got fraped yep. Um, I ended up being in a in a gay relationship with one of the other trainers, 
Funny thing is, he would have had to yeah. confirm it because this is back when you had to confirm that shit back yeah, on right. Facebook. So he was in on it too. Yeah. Jackers. Well, the thing is, like, he then got, like, the prank was against him. Yeah. So we were in a gay relationship for six months on Facebook. <laughs> that actually happened. And I, neither of us wanted to actually, I, I kind of felt sad when I had to end it. So I've just kind of like, this has gone on long enough. Oh, I had not many people comment on that and a few, you're, you're, <laughs> a few uh, messages just going, um, is there something that you, is it what? <laughs> it's like, it's all right, just go Facebook with it. The best Facebook rapes are the ones where you get, where you manage to... Commit. Rapes are not funny, Jono, you shouldn't mention uh, that. They're totally not funny, of course they're not Context. funny. Context. They can be funny, like, picture Porky Pig raping Elmer Fudd. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> what? You can do it. You can do it. Like there's there's humor in everything, and sometimes levity needs to come from somewhere. But we'll we'll talk about. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Bobs. Yeah. Uh, so oh. This is why I like doing unscripted stuff. That's terrible. It is terrible, and we're horrible. Lee, funny. We're horrible people as a result. I was already going to hell a long time ago. Oh, Might man, just enjoy the ride. To come up with, like, um, <laughs> oh, man, remember that day when we decided to change, like, go at, like, about six or ten, something between that number, and we were all changing the words of movie titles with one, changing one word out with the word cut. Pirates of the Caribbean. Caribbean. Curse <laughs> Terminated that to That happened. Judgment. <laughs> <laughs> or just aptly named, cunt. <laughs> I might have to... So Australian. Oh, it's like, oh, man, you work in construction and warehousing, you pick up a few things, mostly swearing. It's like, you usually start yeah, the words, like, like, you start your sentences with, like, fucking, and then the other day, oh, fucking, what was it? You know, it's just, just like that, and it's like, uh, fuck for us is like, bro for Kiwis. Yeah. Like, we say it about the same amount of times. Uh, totally, absolutely. Oh, yeah. the other thing is just like, oh, there's something going around, it's like, oh, yeah, hard, bro, or... I, I, I don't like, know. Oh, bro, I see on this. Oh, bro, but yeah, it's, this comes up so much in like where like fucking when I was at the other fucking Jesus, like you know, it's just stuff like that where it's. Or well, yeah, nah, fuck it's, off. It's hey. just, yeah, it's like yeah, nah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah, fuck. It's like there's things about Australia that confuse everyone and yeah. like, drop bears. Yeah. Oh. Like, <clears throat> I don't know who made that up, but we loved it so much. We well done, whoever that is. If, if that's bears. you that created yes. like the the nation owes you for this we in owe a big you way. So it is so much. Like, like, we are the only country that has a practical joke against the whole world. The Drop Bears are real, by the way. We, we only, we're the only country who endorses Google our them. own Simpsons parody. <laughs> like, it's like, <laughs> something wrong, something wrong, Yank. Yeah, it's pretty big. It's like, and well, what's the other one with Marge, where it's just like, um, it's like, cough, it's like, just want a coffee. Beer, beer. It is. <laughs> it's like, no, coffee, beer. beer. Coffee, beer. C-O-B-E. <laughs> I would have called them Chaz Walkers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good old Simpsons. We can't, can't man. Like, we've got to reminisce. Like, the, those are, when I talk to this, people all the time, they just don't understand. Like, the young generation, and you, um, yes, I'm being this old bastard, but I don't Douche, care. Pre-2000 <laughs> Simpsons changed the world. It I did. wasn't allowed to watch it. Yeah, that's it what apparently. made it so good when you weren't allowed, because <laughs> I wasn't allowed either. Because the, And I'd sneak it every now and then, because it was always yeah. on at 6 o'clock, but like South Park. <laughs> South Park was the hard one because that was on SBS on 8.30 on a Monday. And SBS didn't work all the time because we had the old TVs. Yeah. Man, I actually remember the time when after the the late night movie. Like, oh, the it, Friday night ones on SBS? Well, no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> <clears throat> some, yeah, some interesting memories from that pop up now that you mentioned it. <laughs> There's like, some interesting memories. Like, <laughs> oh, that never happened. Pre-internet days. <laughs> My mind is going places it so shouldn't right now. Oh, man. <laughs> it's going exactly where I'm directing you to. Ah. Fuck, I was going to say something before. We both knew how that. this was going. Oh, yeah. I was, <laughs> you watch... <laughs> I just get so easily sidetracked and then I forget my point. Oh, it's so easy. Uh, yeah, now, after the, the to movie... I Marvel movies, for instance, and I can sidetrack you again and just say, like, doesn't Black Panther... Shut up. I'm going to finish <laughs> I'm gonna finish this story. It's totally irrelevant now. And the like. The, it's Yeah, anyway, after the last film of the... Like the 8.30 movie. Yep. And then it would just turn to static. <coughs> Every time. Yeah. And that that was... And then you had like that emergency signal because there was no late night TV or anything. And then he's like, is there anything on? It's like, no, not even <coughs> Bruce 31's got anything on. Yeah, oh, fuck, you know it's a bad, but then, like, bad TV day when that's about <coughs> nothing. Saturday, Saturday afternoon cartoons with Rugrats. Oh, <laughs> oh man, those, those, those really turned my Captain Planet. Okay, um, <laughs> we actually managed to make a show about 
saving the planet how it, and how it's cool with your magical rings of power. It's like that's like Power Rangers for environmentalists. It's like can we <laughs> yeah. can we can we just acknowledge the fucking majesty of that bloody show? Mm. It did so much for a, like it with came, your powers combined. And then, I am Captain Planet. Captain Planet, he's a hero. Don't push him down to zero. Oh man, I'm so old. Oh, it doesn't. No, not at all. <laughs> no, no. Imagine doing a live action of that. Kids these days just don't know what it's like. Fucking <laughs> young whippersnappers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mac like, in my day. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but you got to the fucking Justice League cartoons, though. SpongeBob. SpongeBob SquarePants. You have not watched SpongeBob. Seriously, on some fucking whack drugs. Amazing. To make that. Whatever. Oh, have doing, you seen the the Netflix show Happy? Yes. Talking I've about seen, absolutely I've weird seen. fucking train wrecks of a show. It's, Man, they must have been on some hard drugs making that shit. Mate, I, oh, this is the other, another thing. Like Christopher Maloney, I think his name is, finally managed to transition from being what's his face on SVU. Oh uh, yeah. Like Elliot Ness. Mm. Oh, not Elliot Ness. Um, Elliot. Old oh, mate. Yeah, Elliot. You know. <laughs> to this guy, and it's like, well done, sir. Like, it, no matter what I think of the um, the show going forward, because I was like, oh man, this is starting to lose its spark a little bit. I want more to happen from Happy. Mm. Um, like, from whatever happens, it's like, dude, I'm just stoked that Christopher Maloney just transitioned. He just beat his typecast. Whenever yeah, an actor can beat his typecast, that's just. Yeah. Oh man, he congratulations broke the mold with the role on that film. I remember I put it on as something to just fill the background, and within minutes, I was just like, what's this? Yeah. Just watching, and then all of a sudden, he just goes into this <coughs> massive fucking trip in the bathroom, yeah. and like the editing on this show is oh, amazing. Yes. Sucks you right into it because a lot of it is completely seamless, and I was just watching it alone, pissing myself laughing, which I don't often do. Over the harshest strategy. Yeah, it's and it was just like, what the fuck is this show? It is yeah. a complete train wreck, and then I just I couldn't stop watching.